Hello, I'm Mimi and it's that time again where I take you behind the scenes of my creative business to look at my income for the previous quarter. And I'll also show you how much I made in total for the financial year and go over some of my business goals. This video is sponsored by Playbook, but more on that later. As always, I make these videos to share realistic insights into running a creative business, but this is just my story and there are lots of other ways you can earn a living as a creative. So if we take a look back at the previous Australian financial year, which runs from July to June, my income was slowly growing each quarter. In the third quarter of last year, I earned about 19,000 Australian dollars. The fourth quarter, I earned nearly 30,000 Australian dollars. And quarter one of this year, that grew to about 35,000 Australian dollars. Now that the second quarter has come and gone, I can share that my creative business earned $26,769 over the past three months. This is actually the first quarter where my income has gone down and we'll go over why that was in a minute, but it still means that overall for the financial year, I earn 110,402 Australian dollars. That means it's the first financial year that I've made six figures in my business, which is a really exciting milestone. And if I look back at my income just from my art and content creation over all three of the financial years since I started, it's really clear to see that things have really taken off in the last year. All of these figures are in Australian dollars because I'm Australian and before I pay tax or any expenses like paying my video editor or for software, accounting and things like that. So let's break down where my income came from over the last quarter and then we can look over some of my business goals moving forwards. Let's start with the smallest income stream which for me as always is affiliate marketing. For the second quarter, I earned $230, which is higher than the previous quarter, but just like always, it isn't a big earner for me. I did share a few Instagram stories with some recommendations that I liked with affiliate links, but other than that, it isn't really something that I focus on. Then we have commissions. The second smallest income stream that I had this quarter was commissions, which earned $2,200 and I include in that figure any art that I'm paid directly for, like picture book illustrations. Last quarter I had a lot more advance payments come in, which is why that number was so high, whereas I didn't have many advances fall within this quarter. It's one of those income streams that's quite variable because it just depends when those invoices fall. I do have some new picture books coming out soon though, which is really exciting and I'm working on some more for next year, so I can't wait to be able to share them all with you. Next I have online stores. So after that I had income from all of my online stores which earned $6,884. That's up quite a bit from the previous quarter because I made some new products recently like a creativity workbook full of drawing ideas and a new digital brush pack. I released those in May and had a nice boost to my income from that launch and the month after also had quite a high revenue as well. I broke down in detail in a really recent video all of the fees that I pay as a small business on platforms like Etsy, so if you're curious to know how that works then give that video a watch after this one. Now that I have lots of lovely resources on my shop, I could make a nice big bundle of all of my favorite art resources for beginner artists, which gives the customer a good discount when they buy everything together, but also gives me a higher cost product to sell, so I don't need to sell as many to earn high revenue. The highest earning product for the quarter was still my original digital brush pack, but followed in second place by my Illustrator starter kit bundle, which was only released halfway through the quarter, and then my new creativity workbook. If you're a creative person making lovely things and need somewhere to store them all, then I want to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, which is Playbook. Playbook is an online cloud storage for creatives that lets us store, organize, and tag our work and can act as a portfolio for anything that we choose to make public. It's sort of a more visual version of Dropbox with options to tag your work so that you can find what you're looking for really quickly. I like that I can use it to store files but also share them with clients or other creatives. I can properly organize things to be easy to find or view 
and I can add other media to my boards like color swatches to form palettes. It even has some built-in project management features so I can keep track of how I'm progressing through professional projects when I have lots to illustrate like with picture book projects. If you're looking for a cloud storage system that's visual and intuitive, then sign up using the link in my description and you'll get four terabytes of storage and a new creative hub to store your lovely ideas. Thanks so much to Playbook for sponsoring this video. Let's jump on to the next income stream. YouTube. My second highest income stream was YouTube, which earned $8,133. Usually YouTube is my largest income stream, but this quarter it fell back a bit and there are two main reasons for that. One is that my views returned to a more normal amount after one of my videos had been pushed to a lot of new viewers for a while. And the other reason is that I had fewer sponsorships. I didn't intend to take on fewer sponsors, but just because of timings and a few changes happening, I didn't do any sponsored videos in all of May. I do have someone representing me for sponsorships now, which is amazing, but by the time I got all of that figured out, it meant that there was just a bit of a quiet patch. And then we have Patreon. So my highest earning income stream for the second quarter was Patreon, which earned $9,320, which is just a little bit higher than the previous quarter. Because my Patreon is a little bit tied to the growth of my other platforms like YouTube, it can be a bit up and down these days. But overall, if I look at the growth over time, it's really generally trending upwards, which is why it's important to zoom out and look at a broader perspective sometimes. I love making videos and tutorials for my Patreon and don't intend to stop anytime soon. So it'll be interesting to see where it is later in the year. And the good thing is that most of the main benefits that I upload, like the videos and step-by-step -step drawing articles, stay up there so it only becomes more and more valuable over time for new patrons who are joining. So because I had less income from YouTube sponsorships and I didn't have as many picture book advance payments, my income was lower than the previous two quarters. It can also be that at certain times of year, people shop online less, they might be outside enjoying the summer instead of watching YouTube, or cutting back on their spending as the cost of living goes up. It doesn't make me concerned or make me think that I immediately need to change anything. I think the stats would have to be trending downwards for quite a few months before I got concerned because like I've said before, progress isn't always linear. It does confirm to me though why it's important to diversify your income if you want stability because even though I earn a lot less from YouTube, I earned more from Etsy and Patreon held steady so overall I still had a great income. And like I said at the start of the video, over the course of the full financial year, my business earned six figures for the first time, which seems so crazy to me that I started out just drawing every day and sharing it on the internet, and now a few years later I have a six-figure business. I know it's in Australian dollars and a lot of you are in the US and different places in the world, but I'm Australian so it's a really cool financial milestone for my creative business to hit. I do have a full video about how I built my art and content business if you want to view the full story of how I grew to where I am now. So let's talk about some business goals for this next quarter. My first goal is to not work more than four days a week, which is actually not about business growth at all, but I'm in Europe and it's summer and I want to be able to enjoy it. Not every goal is about growing or expanding. Sometimes I need to slow down a bit and focus on my own physical and mental health so that I'm in a better position to work hard again later in the year. I want to do another business challenge or experiment. I just posted to Instagram for 30 days in a row to see if it would improve my reach and I learned a lot from that. Some other things I want to try next are starting an email newsletter and tracking the results or trying out some paid advertising. And I would really like to hire a freelancer to help with writing. I've been wanting to convert my videos into blog posts for a while, but it takes a bit of time. So I think I'm ready to outsource that. My rough plan at the moment is to spend a little bit less time working over the summer and then a little bit more time working in the winter when it's cold and dark and I don't really want to go outside. Let us know in the comments if you have any plans for your art or content business this quarter. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.